toilets or anything, back, um, and it has already started back for some, I thought it'd be fun to do a pop quiz. Oh, no. So, <laughs> next week, how many services are we going back to? Very good. <laughs> Billy didn't pass that question. <laughs> what time were they? Typically, we have Sunday school in between both services, but next week, what are we gonna have? Food. Food, yes. So you're invited to bring your favorite breakfast casserole dish or cinnamon rolls, which is whose favorite? That's right. With you and your family, plus four to six other people. We are also gonna present our fourth grade uh, students with their Bibles during both services, and during the welcome back brunch, the Serendipity Sunday School class would like to invite you to honor and celebrate the arrival and upcoming arrival of two new babies to our congregation. Please join us next Sunday, August 20th, for a baby shower. Matt, Allie, Dom, and Louisa Brumel have welcomed a new boy, Wesley, and Casey, Tasha, and Adelaide Houston Nilsson will welcome a girl in September. The celebration will take place in the weekly library across from the large fellowship hall gift cards and special surprises, surprises are appreciated. Uh, also, today, from 12 to 2, in the Large Fellowship Hall, there is a surprise birthday party for Ed Taylor. And I have a surprise for all of you. You're all invited. <laughs> Happy 80th birthday to Ed. Let's give him a round of applause. Um, with firewood season approaching and with Matt Brumel's deployment, we were hoping our church would come out and help load and split uh, wood throughout the week anytime it is convenient for you, and we thank you on behalf of Mitchell and I. Um, be on the lookout for an email explaining our new electronic door system. The system went live last week, and we are grateful for this new and important upgrade for our church. Also next week, we are going to have our Joy Kids pool party from 1230 to 2.30 with lunch provided, and we hope you will um, come out to celebrate a new school year. And then the youth... We today for youth group pool party night! <laughs> Adam, that's next week! Uh, so next week's youth group pool party is at 4.30 to 7.30 where the youth bring us, or the middle school <laughs> inside and the high school bring the church. That's right! Okay, perfect! So next week
Will you pray with me? Holy Spirit, when the world seems dark and hard, I'm grateful for this place where there is unity, hope, and love. I'm grateful for people that I can worship with who are like family. Open up our hearts and our minds to hear your word today. May it reside in our heart and be with us as we go throughout our week. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let us stand and greet one another. and concerns together. This morning we, we lift up Don Adams. Um, he is home now and resting. But we ask continued prayers for him and for uh, the Adams family. We also remember Andy DeGrove, Bill Anderson's brother Andy, Tim Martin, Robbie Pittman, Scott Huffman, cousin uh, Wade Odell Jr. We also continue to remember Fred and Janice Harris with the passing of Janice's mom, Shirley. All those who have been affected by the, the devastating wildfires in Maui. Uh, Michael Forbes' uh, family, we lift them up today with the passing of Michael's mother, 
And of course, uh, I think it's uh, this coming Wednesday, right? So uh, we lift up uh, students and teachers uh, for, the, for the next uh, year of school. Are there any others to, to lift up? Really? praises Pat for your uh, healing and for Thanksgiving for the prayers and also praise uh, for your son after having found uh, a job. Yes, Ellen? I have a praise for poor daughter This was your daughter, Jean. Uh, praise uh, seventh year cancer free. See another hand? Yes. Right. Lift up, Jim. Prayers for healing. I have a little three year old friend named Milo who suffered some serious burns. And he's going to be in a rough shape for a while. So we lift up David's three-year-old friend, Milo, um, who has um, received some, some burns and will be in some uh, tough place for the next little while. Are there others? Uh, Laura and I were married here 12 years ago today. Ooh. She is still put up. <laughs> Congrats uh, to uh, Drew and Lauren, 12 years, and for Lauren's patience. <laughs> Are there uh, any others? Yes, Joyce. Prayers for Joyce. Joyce Turk. Are there others to lift up this morning? so grateful that we can gather together to worship you. We lift up these prayer requests, the spoken and the unspoken, for those with secret hurts and pains, and for those we pray for continuously. Be with them, Lord. We especially want to remember our friends in Maui, for those who lost everything, for those who lost loved ones, and for the first responders and firefighters. Help us to step up and respond in the best way we know how. With a new school year here, we especially want to remember our teachers and faculty who wear many hats and love children like their own, and for students to view school like a second home. We pray for a safe, healthy, and fun school year. Help us to remember those who are grieving, those who are sick, those who are lonely and isolated. Help us to be that good, kind friend and neighbor who reaches out and takes care of one another. We pray all this as we remember the prayer you taught your friends so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation.
Please stand as you are able and join us in singing Here I Am, Lord, number 593 in the red United Methodist hymnal. Scripture is from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33, um, where Jesus walks on the water. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. Early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it's I. Do not be afraid. <coughs> Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, Come. 
So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when Peter noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me! Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Please remain seated as we sing the hymn of preparation, number 348 in the Methodist hymnal, softly and tenderly, Jesus is called.
once heard the story of a pastor who was having a conversation with somebody. Uh, it kind of started to get into some deep theology when this other person just spoke up and said, you know, I, I don't really concern myself with the complexities of faith and religion. Do unto others as you'd have them do to you pretty much sums it up for me. The pastor said, okay, uh, what, what, what do you do for a living? And the person said, I'm a, an astrophysicist, or maybe it was astronomer, it was something in that line of work. And the pastor's kind of tongue in cheek said, you know, I don't really concern myself with the complexities of astrophysics and astronomy. Twinkle, twinkle, little star pretty much uh, sums it up. <clears throat> now, I don't know what kinds of theological things this pastor wanted to, to talk about with this person, but perhaps some of them might have been the topics that come up in our passage today. Uh, deep questions uh, about faith and doubt and the call of God. Matthew's the only gospel writer who put this story in his gospel. Like Luke doesn't even bother mentioning it. Some have suggested maybe this is because Luke is the, he's the doctor, he's the, the scientist. He couldn't, uh, couldn't uh, bring himself to put a story in that maybe would uh, invite others to have to you know, suspend their understanding of, of, of the natural world. Uh, maybe Luke had seen before like those little water bugs that because they can land on the water and because of surface tension they can kind of float there or walk around there. And actually I, when I came across this concept of you know, surface tension, it made me think about, well, who, who in our congregation, uh, you know, uh, sciencey folks uh, could maybe uh, offer some. So we know Carmen uh, is uh, in chemistry, but actually, very specifically, she like works with surface chemistry, which is kind of a cool thing. Uh, we put together a little video, and she was gracious enough to, to be a part of that, so we're going to try to play that now. All right, we're over here at Apodaca. We're going to go into the lab here, and Carmen is going to show us a few things. Hey, Mitch asked me to talk to you guys a little bit about surface tension. So we're here in my lab, and I have a little demo set up for you. Um, the easiest way to understand surface tension is first to understand how molecules interact with each other. So I've got a bucket of water molecules here. Molecules really like to be near neighbors. They don't like to be alone. So the water molecules down the bottom, they're all surrounded by other water molecules. They're really happy. The ones that are at the surface, however, they're kind of missing half of their neighbors because there's nothing above them, so they're a little lonely. They would love it if there were some other water molecules nearby that they could grab onto, but they're not really that picky. They will grab onto just about anything, and so that is a force that we call surface tension. And it's so strong that it will latch onto even something like this. So this little basket here is full of holes, and you might think it would just sink right down into the water, but instead, it actually will just sit there and float. And that's because the molecules that are at the surface are grabbing onto that basket and actually helping to support it. The surface tension is actually a pretty strong force. So you might think if I put some pennies, if I put a penny in the water, it's gonna sink right to the bottom. But I'm gonna actually put it in the basket and see what amount of force or gravity of these pennies, this weight that the basket can support. All right, so there you go. We had five pennies. That's a lot of weight for that surface tension to hold up. So that surface tension is pretty strong. And that's surface tension. <laughs> Thank Thank, thanks, Carmen. Yeah, when, when she was talking to me about this over the phone, and I was sort of visualizing the demonstration, I was imagining a, a plastic basket with like a flat bottom. And I thought, well, yeah, you know, that, I think that would float. But then when I showed up, it had the holes in it, and I thought, how in the world is this going to not just immediately uh, sink? Um, you know, uh, surface tension is, is, this is a cool thing, uh, but uh, some of you look maybe a little skeptical. Uh, you know, we're not talking about five or six pennies, right? We're talking about the, the weight of a fully grown uh, adult. Um, you know, so what, what, there is tension, right? T tension between uh, this story and our own lived experiences. Uh, what are we to make of, of this story? Uh, how do we ha handle a, a, a passage like this? Or maybe, maybe the better question, what is God trying to say to us uh, through the, the passage? Well, the passage has, has often been handled 
uh, in a way that kind of makes it into a litmus test. Like, look, uh, all the people who believe that it happened exactly the way Matthew said, y'all get to sit up in the balcony just a little closer to heaven. You know, the, the, the rest of us who maybe have a little bit more difficulty uh, believing the unbelievable, uh, well, you know, we, we just don't pass the test, I guess. You know, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know about you, but this doesn't sound quite right to me. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what it would prove to divide people into be believer and doubter, especially when you look at the lives of the disciples, uh, you know, as they had these pretty miraculous things happen right in front of them and not just reading about them, they would, they would continue to, to, to have their doubts. Plus, I, I don't know if the ability to believe the unbelievable is the same thing as faith. Uh, maybe uh, wrestle with that question some in the Sunday school classes today or think about it some throughout the week and, and report back to me because I don't have a, an answer on that one. But, may, but maybe the, the, the ability to believe the unbelievable is not the same thing as faith. And then maybe the most important thing is I'm not so sure the best question to ever ask of a passage of Scripture is, did this really happen as much as, what is God trying to say to me through this scripture? So may, may, maybe the point is not so much that God pulled these water molecules tight enough together to support the weight of a man uh, as much as this was no man at all. Uh, that's what's interesting you know, to me. You know, some, some, while sometimes we uh, might get sort of bogged down in the repeatability of this walking on water thing or using, you know, to try to prove whether it happened exactly the way Matthew said it did or use this passage as a proof text for faith, it doesn't seem that Jesus wanted to walk on water as a way of trying to prove anything. His friends were in trouble and, and they needed to be comforted and one of the, you know, the way he chose to do that was, was not simply well, not just the, the walking on water thing, but also the calling out to them uh, and uh, assuring them of, of who he was. When uh, scholars have pointed out that when, when he does that, when he says, be encouraged, it's me, the, the literal translation into the Greek of it's me is ego a me, or in the Hebrew, Yahweh. So in the English, God. You know, be encouraged, it's, it's me, God. So remember when I said, uh, I wonder if, if doubt is, is just uh, a part of the, the journey of faith, uh, you know, rather than the opposite of, of faith because of the disciples and, and their lived experiences. Uh, the, fir the first thing was that they probably would have immediately been reminded of God, just the fact that you know, these other stories in Scripture of God moving upon the waters. And then you've got the, be encouraged, it's me, God. There was already kind of a two-step verification here, but they still think you know, that it might be a ghost. And so that's when Peter, kind of in a three-step verification, says, you know, if it is you, Lord, then, then have me come out to you on the water. Have me step out uh, of the boat. So it sort of reminded me of uh, a couple weeks ago, I was having a phone conversation with my mom. We were just sort of catching up. And I, I guess I must have just recently saw on TV or watched a news story or something about AI and how they can take like three or four seconds of your voice and immediately extrapolate that to, it sounds like you, but it's not you. And it can, it can say whatever. And I thought, you know, one day my mom is going to get a call and I, they're going to say I'm in prison and I need, need help getting bailed out or I need... <coughs> Need $500 in Amazon gift cards right now? Uh, something like that. So I, I said, uh, we really need to probably come up with some kind of, because, you know, my, my voice, you can find it on YouTube or whatever. Uh, we need to have some kind of code word. We need to have some sort of safe, you know, a uh, thing where uh, you, you will know that it's me. And uh, I'm not going to tell you what it, what it is. <laughs> but uh, we came up with something. Because this is how you will know that it is me. 
And it's as if this is how you will know it's Jesus. God made flesh. This is how you pick Jesus out of a crowd. Jesus is the one who dares you to leave the safety of the boat, to step into the sea, to test the waters, not so that they so that Jesus can figure out who believes and who who doubts, but so that it can be shown what your faith is made of, regardless of where you are on your journey of faith. You know, softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me, okay. Uh, but maybe the hymn puts it a little, a, a little too mildly. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling you to risk your life, <laughs> to throw caution to the wind, step out and, and defy death. Uh, apparently so. Uh, one person reminds us that Jesus had already called the disciples to drop their nets, to leave their families, and to go with them, go with him on a perilous sea called discipleship. Why then would we find it strange for one of those people to now say, Lord, if it is you, then call me to come out onto the waves? It's like Peter is saying, ba based, Jesus, uh, on all of my past experiences of you, ask me something only you would be crazy enough to ask of me. As if Peter knew or, or, or at least felt in some way, even in the midst of his doubt, that God is the one who calls us out of the relative safety of our lives into a whole new life. God is the one who disrupts our lives, calls us out onto the waves, out on, into the deep, into the uncertain, gets us to wrestle with the deep questions, whether we're theologians or astronomers or astrophysicists, who am I? Uh, who, who are we? Whose are we? Why am I here? What am I supposed to do with my life? What am I capable of if I trust my life to Jesus? Years ago, I, I had the privilege of getting to know someone. Uh, I'll just call her Jane. Uh, she had done something that I'd never, you know, I didn't know anybody else to ever do. So I've always remembered the story she told me of a uh, time when she was on a game show. And it was not a game show that ever took off. It never aired or anything, but she was doing really well on, in this particular game show. She was in first place. She was getting ready to, to win because she just needed one more answer, one more question. She had just buzzed in to answer it, and she knew the answer, but something stopped her. Some, somewhere in between buzzing in and opening her mouth to answer the question, something told her to just stop. Uh, as it turned out, it was the 1960s. Racial tensions were very high, and another contestant was a, a black mother of six. And something just told Jane to let the time expire so that this mother of six would win the grand prize instead, which turned out to be a, a big freezer just slap full of, of food. And I, and I remember that story because I, I wondered what would, what would make someone do such a thing what, what was it that got her or convinced her to do something like that? Or maybe, maybe who, who? Who would ask her to do something like that? Who would call out to her to not answer, to, to appear less intelligent in front of a, a crowd, to lose, to be last, to, to put someone else first? Who, who would ask her to do that? Who would call out to her in that way? I think we might know who. Let us pray. Lord, you call us to step out in faith, trusting in you for all things. Sometimes you ask us to do things that no one else would ever ask us to do. Sometimes we respond by sinking in doubt or fear. Sometimes we are distracted from your purposes and hide from the challenges you place before us. Sometimes we are presumptuous about your will, belittling others and magnifying ourselves. Forgive us, we pray. 
Search our hearts and lift us up. Help us to see doubt as a part of the journey of faith, but don't leave us there. Help us to walk with you in faith, humility, and love, that we might practice our faith in all circumstances. Amen.
Now's the time where we sing our last song. Almost the time when we sing our last song. We vote with Charlotte. message that shows us it's okay to doubt, to ask questions, to take a leap. Because no matter if life is calm and happy or it's stormy and hard, you're there for us. We're also grateful for the people we can connect with who show us your love through their heart, mind, and soul, making the unbelievable believable. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now's the time when we sing our last song. Um, please stand up and sing it across the aisle as a prayer to your neighbor. Maybe. 